Let's solve a quadratic equation in one variable. I've written over here on the board, solve x squared minus 2x minus 24 equals 0. So this is a quadratic equation in one variable, and it's already in standard form. Uh, decreasing powers of the variable on one side and 0 on the other side. So now to solve this equation, what we need to do is use our zero factor property. To use the zero factor property, we have to factor this left side of this. So we have the trinomial x squared minus 2x minus 24. I want to factor that into the product of two binomials. So it will be x and x here, so that when I multiply x times x, I get x squared. The two numbers I put here have to multiply and give me negative 24 and add and give me negative 2. What do you think? How about negative 6 and positive 4? Negative 6 times positive 4, negative 24. When I multiply inside here, I have negative 6x, outside positive 4x. That will give me a middle term of negative 2x. So there, I've succeeded in factoring this. Now I can use my zero factor property, which tells me that if I multiply two expressions and end up with zero, one or the other or both has to be zero. The only way to multiply and get zero is to multiply by zero. In either case, if this is zero, I have a solution to my equation. And if this is zero, I have a solution to my equation. Either way, I get a solution. So I'll set my factors equal to zero. x minus 6 is zero, or x plus 4 is zero. Okay, so that's my zero factor property. I have to have zero on the right side to do this, and I have to have multiplication on the left side. Now, I've reduced this down to two linear equations in one variable, very easy to solve. X is equal to six, or X is equal to negative four. So here's my two linear equations in one variable. When I solve them, I get my two solutions. X is six, or X is negative four. I can take e either one of these solutions, substitute it back into this original equation, and I'll get a true statement. These are the two solutions. And look, my chalk matches my flowers right here. If we're going to solve a quadratic equation by factoring, we have to first put it in standard form, then factor. So here I've written 100x squared equals 300x. It's a quadratic equation because I have x to the second here. I'm going to put this in standard form by getting all the variable terms on one side. So I'll have 100 x squared minus 300 x equals 0. So I use my addition property of equality to add negative 300 x to both sides. That gives me all my variable terms on this side. I have decreasing powers of the variable on one side, 0 on the other. That's standard form. I need it in standard form. I need this 0 right here so I can use that 0 factor property. Now let's factor. I see I have a 100 x common to both terms. I'll take that outside first. Remember, when we do factoring, we always look for the greatest common factor first, take that outside, and see what's left. When I factor 100x out of 100x squared, what's left is x. When I factor 100x from 300x, what's left is 3. So now here's my equation, my left side in factored form. I'll use the zero factor property to set each factor equal to 0. 100x is equal to 0, or x minus 3 is equal to 0. Let me see if that still stayed on the screen. Yep. So 100x is equal to 0, or x minus 3 is equal to 0. In either case, when either one of these is 0, I get a solution to my equation, because if this is 0, that product is 0. If this is 0, that product is 0. So either way, I get a solution to the equation. How can 100x be equal to 0? Only if x itself is 0. Or x minus 3 is equal to 0 if x is equal to 3. So here I have two solutions, x equal 3 and x equals 0. Both of these are solutions to my original equation. Here we have another equation to solve that I think is going to come out to be quadratic because when I multiply these out, I know I'm going to get a squared term. Let's see what this looks like. Now, you might think to yourself here, x minus 2 times x plus 1 is equal to 4 means that x minus 2 is 4, x plus 1 is 4. No, that won't work. That only works when the number over here is 0. 0 is the only number with that property that if you multiply and get 0, you have to have multiplied by 0. You can multiply and get 4 without ever multiplying by 4. 
for instance, two times two is four. Just because the product of two things is four doesn't mean that either one of them is. But if the product of two things is zero, absolutely for sure one or the other or both has to be zero. So we have to use our zero factor property. We have to put this in standard form so we have zero on one side of the equation. So I'm going to start by multiplying this out. So I'm going to have x squared minus 2x plus 1x minus x minus 2 is equal to 4. So I multiply these two binomials. I get x squared minus x minus 2 is equal to 4. Now to get 0 on this side, I'll add negative 4 to both sides. x squared minus x minus 6 is equal to 0. Now I have a quadratic equation in standard form equivalent to my original equation because all I've done is use the addition property of equality and a little multiplication here. I'll factor this. Let's hope it factors. x and x to give me x squared. I need two numbers here that I'm going to multiply and get negative 6 and add and get negative 1. What do you think? How about negative 3 and positive 2? Does that work? Negative 3 times positive 2, negative 6. Inside that product is negative 3x. Outside that product is 2x. When I add those together, I get negative x. So sure enough, this checks. I'll set x minus 3 equal to 0, and I'll set x plus 2 equal to 0. So I have x is equal to 3, or x is equal to negative 2 as my two solutions to my original equation right here. I could take either one of these, put them back in this original equation, and you would see when I multiply here, I'd end up with 4 on both sides of the equation. The next equation isn't what we would call quadratic, but we still use the methods we've been using to solve quadratic equations to solve this equation. Here I have 2x cubed equals 5x squared plus 3x. So it's not quadratic, it's actually cubic because the highest power of the variable is 3. But we'll still do the same thing. We'll put it in standard form, we'll factor if we can, and then we'll set the factors equal to 0. So I'm going to start by taking these two terms, adding their opposite to both sides to give me 2x cubed minus 5x squared minus 3x is equal to 0. So I use the addition property of equality here to write this in standard form. It's not quadratic, but I think I can factor it and set the factors equal to 0. I notice, first of all, that I have an x common to each term. I'll take that outside. What's left is 2x squared minus 5x minus 3 equals 0. And remember, I can always multiply x back times each of these three terms, compare it with what I have here to make sure that I factored correctly. Now let's see if we can factor this trinomial here into the product of two binomials. So I need two terms here that will multiply and give me 2x squared. Let's try 2x and x. I need two terms here and here to multiply and give me negative 3, such that when I multiply inside and outside, I get negative 5x. Let's try 1 and 3. Inside is 1x, outside is 6x. Mm, I think that'll work. Okay, so 6x here, I'll make that negative, I'll make that positive. Inside is 1x, outside is negative 6x. That gives me a middle term of negative 5x, and 1 times negative 3 is negative 3. Okay, so now I have the product of three factors equal to 0. Well, the same thing holds with the zero factor property. I can't multiply and get zero without multiplying by zero. And if any one of these three factors is zero, that whole product is zero, so I get a solution to my equation. So I'll set each factor equal to zero. I get x equals zero. 2x plus 1 equals zero. And x minus 3 equals zero. So here are my three solutions. I get one solution, which is x equals zero x is equal to negative 1 half when I add negative 1 to both sides and then divide by 2, and x is equal to positive 3. So there I have three solutions to my original equation. It wasn't quadratic, it was cubic, but still I solved it by the same method here by factoring using the zero factor property, and look, I get three solutions to that equation.